Stories that we hear about retirement are keeping us working longer than we need to. Okay. Hey folks, I've started making this video two weeks ago and you know, my format, you know, you can't see, but I have a computer screen behind me with some notes and I made this two weeks ago and, and struggled with, um, you know, was I even going to produce it, but it's real. And you know, there are two truths at, towards the end I'm going to talk about that every retiree must accept. Two truths, okay? And they're real important, and I don't hear anybody talking about them. My name is Joe. Uh, I am retired. So I retired four and a half years ago. Uh, I was 54, 59 now. So this is my journey, my story, personal experience, Plus, I've met with over 200 folks and talking to them as a retirement coach and helping them through this transition. So uh, I think I got a lot of experience in this area and uh, I think you'll get comfort in uh, today's message, okay? So um, first, hey folks, <laughs> my schedule is getting overwhelmed with requests, okay? I... I try to be a retirement coach. I have one person a day maximum so I can dedicate my time and understanding and thinking to you. I try to do four to five a week and I'm booked out like eight weeks. I can't meet with everybody, okay? Uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> I, I just can't. Um, and one a day is fun and you know I get a lot of joy out of helping people, but I can't do 10 a day. So I, I do have an organization called Money Pickle, okay? They're the second link you'll find below. And this is, it's all about you. You choose to do this or not. If you contact them for free, for free, no cost, no obligation, nothing. You contact them. The first thing you do when you hit that link, it's going to ask you for a date and time you want to meet. Somebody will call you and you have a free 45 minutes with a certified financial planner, um, that's been screened for you. So you can ask them any question you got. Okay. So that's choose to do that if you want. Uh, I think it's a great service. I've met with one of them, uh, very impressive, uh, people there. Ask them a question when to take social security, you know, have them look at your retirement plan, ask them about Roth conversions, whatever specific you want, go ahead and do that. So, um, anyway, what happens in these retirement stories you're told by experts on YouTube, you know, a financial advisor on television, the facts begin to get distorted as soon as the storytelling begins. The, the, they just get distorted. So as humans uh, and experts with egos, we gloss over in the stories we tell the fears, the embarrassing moments, the missteps, uh, all we do is highlight in our stories our brilliance and the highlights and our courage, okay? We just gloss over all the ugly stuff. Um, you know, here's an example. Look at the last time you bought a car. You know, what story did you tell, okay, when you're talking to your neighbor about buying a car? Like, hey, I did the research on a car. I decided to buy a Toyota Camry. Um, you know, I looked at the, uh, um, blue book value. I looked at the, um, you know, the retail price, what they're asking, did all my research on, um, um, online about the reliability of the car and what people are paying on Kelly blue book, for example, what people are paying in your area. I walked into the dealership and the salesman tried to sell me all this other stuff, all these other features. I stood tall and threatened to walk out. I was walking out in the parking lot when I was just frustrated with the salesman. He ran after me in the parking lot and I got the best deal ever recorded at this dealership. That, that's kind of the story that we tell, right? You know, we just did a great job and I got it $2,000 less than anybody else and, and uh, the salesman uh, told me that. So um, what about all the doubts during that discussion? What about all your second guessing, the convincing story by the salesperson, your heart beating, you know, you're sweating, uh, and you think you got the best deal? What do you think the, the salesperson is telling their sales manager? Hey, man, I had this guy, I got a great price out of this. They're telling another story. So storytelling 
we do that and we we do the storytelling in such a way that we boost our own egos. So, hey, another one, uh, and I'll tie this into retirement. Hang with me, hang with me. Warren Buffett, okay, this, you know the story. He's one of the greatest investors, if not the greatest investor of all time. Very true. But, you know, let's take a little contrarian point of view. You know, what he did fantastically is compounding interest. He started investing and he bought and hold companies for 70 years, 70 years, buy and hold. He worked hard, studied hard, bought some good companies, but he was also lucky, okay? There were no scandals, no major scandals, no major lawsuits, no Bud Light moments uh, that could have uh, derailed him. And the story is told, you invest like the master, you can't lose. No stress, no fears, no worries. Boom, you're, you're a billionaire. All you gotta do is do that for 70 years, be, be warm buff. But there's a thing called survivor's bias. Survivor's bias. Sorry, I'm stumbling on that. You know, how many investors did the exact same thing Warren Buffett did and lost everything? Or had mediocre results and got lost in the crowd? Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, maybe thousands and thousands of thousands of people did exactly what Warren Buffett did, but somehow he managed to work through, had, had some luck, hard work, hard work. I don't want to say it was l all luck, but there's luck involved. Uh, but there's so many people that did the same thing and they didn't end up with billions, okay? It's called survivor bias, you know? How many lottery winners, you know, they have, you know, that you win the lottery, you win $100 million, and in the post-media interview, they talk about, hey, I have a system for picking my numbers, and, and, uh, like, oh man, good system, good system. But nobody interviews the losers that all had their own systems. <laughs> and, uh, you know, they, they just didn't uh, have luck. Okay, so please don't don't give me any comments that Warren Buffett was, it was all luck, but there was a lot of luck involved because there was a lot of people that did the exact same thing as him that were not successful. Okay, so the stories get glossed over and you said, all I need is the perfect plan. So financial experts, advisors, guys on YouTube, you know, they do, their job is to give you confidence. So you say, hey, follow my bucket strategy, follow my 4% rule, follow my asset allocation, my Roth conversion strategy, whatever it happens to be. But a lot of these folks, the vast majority of folks that you see, they're talking about retirement that they studied. They studied these other individuals. They haven't gone through it themselves, okay? So they're missing all the emotion that goes along with the decision to retire, okay? The uncertainty, the fear, uh, am I doing the right thing, okay? The, those myths and stories begin as soon as they start talking, okay? And it's, it's not that they're lying, they don't know the emotional aspect of making the, the decision to retire. Okay, so if you have doubts, you're in your basement bunker and you have fears, anxiety about retirement, maybe I should work one more year, maybe I need $100,000 more, maybe I should wait till I'm 65 and eligible for some you know, benefits, all these fears and doubts are keeping you from making that decision because everything you've been told is you just do these steps, follow my eight step plan, my 10 step plan and make the decision, retire and go walking off into the sunset. Hey folks, that's not reality. That's, that's just not reality. So with these fears and doubts, what happens, this happened to me, you relentlessly look for books and YouTube videos on retirement, looking for the secret that you may have missed. You seek out ex experts that have come before you. You know, hey, you retired. What, what surprised you? What surprised you? The endless search for the perfect plan to get to 100% uh, confidence so you can retire. You actually take create new goalposts. You say, yeah, I want to have $500,000. And then you get there and you say, I want to have seven fifty, dollars And then you want to have a million. You keep moving the goalpost because of your fear. Why am I having this gut reaction 
that this just isn't right because all the experts say, Re you know, hey, follow my 10 point plan. Like I said, end result is you end up working one more year. So my message, okay, bring it all together here, guys, okay? Retirement is a massive transition. You've not trained for this. You trained for a skilled career to make money, to save, to invest. That's what you've done your whole life. 55 years, 60 years, 65 years, you've trained for that game. You didn't train for retirement. It's a new game. It's a total, total new game. You know, if you've trained for baseball, you are asked to play soccer. It's a new game. Retirement is completely different. You're going to be a spender, not a saver. Huge, huge. But, hey folks, you won the game already. You won the game of life if you're contemplating retirement. You really have won. You do the work, okay? You do your analysis, meet with a couple financial advisors, see what they have to say, see if they're right for you. They could be. Uh, I like getting the comprehensive software package. That's a strong recommendation from me. That's what I personally do. You stress test it, you know, taking Social Security early, later, dying early, poor returns, average returns, high returns, and you don't go it alone, okay? You've heard me talk about all those things before. But, okay, here are the two truths, okay? Get a pencil down, write down these two truths. You should expect fear, doubt, and concern. You should expect that, okay? When you make the decision to jump into retirement, that is perfectly natural. I was. I had those fears. What if, what if the stock market doesn't return for the next 10 years, 15 years? What if it only returns 2 3%? You know, what if my, I, I develop a medical condition? My wife develops a medical condition. What if a tornado strikes my house? Blah, blah, blah. All these what if things. Fear, you will have fear when you make this decision. If you are trying to get 100% confidence, you'll never retire, okay? So expect that fear. Okay, number two, then the second truth, courage is going to be needed, courage. That means making, taking action in spite of your fears, okay? Now, I'm not saying do something foolish. You gotta do all the homework ahead of time, okay? You gotta do all the homework, all the studying, all the analysis, but in the end, it's gonna be a leap of faith. And you've been successful so far. Why won't you be successful in retirement, even though you've never trained for it? A whole lot of people make that transition. Most people make that transition. You can too. But if you go into it thinking that you're gonna, you need the perfect plan and you need to keep analyzing, 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 you're going to keep working one more year, two more years, three more years. And that, to me, is really my concern about the the uh, the community of people that, you know, watch my channel is they keep searching and keep coming up with reasons to keep working because they're not a hundred percent confident. I've met with over 200 families, 200 people, just like you. It's with everybody. Every single person is seeking that confidence. That's why they seek me out. That's why you don't go it alone, but expect fear and expect to have courage. Okay. There you go. There's are the two truths that you must have to retire. Okay? You can do this. You got it. This is Joe out.